women in documentary film are increasing. Yeah. And proportionally to say narrative film, much more so. The directors of narrative films is about 17%. Mm-hmm. percent 35 percent of documentaries are directed by women. Why do you think that is? Um, I think, you know, the um, women are great storytellers. Um, long tradition of writing and expressive communication. Um, but there's, there, you know, making a film is an expensive endeavor. Um, and so, you know, the, the biggest barrier to entry in narrative filmmaking is funding. Um, you have to convince, uh, if not a studio, um, and if you think about it in the independent world, you're asking people to give you a lot of money um, on a very speculative venture. And so women have had difficulties, you know, getting that that funding. In documentary, um, I don't think we're asking anybody. <laughs> I think, you know, we're doing um, what I did, which is use our own networks that we've established over the years to go to people who are in power. A lot of foundation executives are women um, who are not put off by the idea of a woman producing and directing a documentary. Um, so I, I think actually probably the number, what, in documentary, if you looked at number of women producers, you probably even have a it, higher. It's even higher. It percentage. is higher. Yeah, right. I was saying yeah. directing, but it, it is higher. Um, so um, you know, we we're kind of not taking no for an answer in documentaries. Um, and then you know, the other thing in in documentary is um, the cost of getting started are a lot lower. So um, I don't have to. I, I can show somebody what I'm thinking about doing pretty easily with a pretty low cost It's always investment. funny to me because some narrative films now, they're filming them like documentaries, they supposedly, are, you know, know. kind of jumpy or whatever, yes, I know. <laughs> low tech. Um, copycats. Yeah, copycats. <laughs> did your background, you think, though, at uh, a and and ABC help you um, It did tremendously. Start this? Yeah, it did. I mean, um, you know, I, I was laughing my bio because you don't think of yourself this way. They're like an ABC executive or an A&E executive. Um, what those jobs did is I had a, a clear understanding of what the market for the film could mm. be. Um, I knew how to write a budget yeah. and I knew how to write a grant proposal. Um, and I also knew how to organize and take control of a situation, um, which did not mean I knew what I was doing. <laughs> it just meant that I had those other skills. Good facade. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, so I, there a lot of documentary and any film is just being a leader is just saying, all right, I want to tell this story. How do I get from A to D? Um, and, you know, if you don't think about the end product as much as, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can organize a shoot, I can tell people what I want it to look like, I can interview someone. Um, and being a lawyer, I was a very good listener. Um, and I think when you're, when you're in, you know, we were talking earlier about, um, or we were also talking about um, what it's like to interview people about very intimate, personal topics. Um, and um, you have to have a level of trust. And people can tell when you're actually interested in what they're saying. Um, and so I you know, was able to establish a rapport with the film subjects. And I think that that's what comes through, um, that they're being honest. They're not always on message. Well, um, Brandy let you film her in her bathroom. I know. <laughs> she was always in her bathroom. The so. ultimate trust, putting on her makeup. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you went through things that I think are helpful for filmmakers to know about, like good pitch. Yeah. You know, there are a number of, um, I, th I think the foundation world um, in particular has realized that the funding for documentary has just decreased in traditional broadcast um, avenues has decreased so substantially that the foundations have really been stepping up and giving filmmakers um, support. So Good Pitch uh, is run by an organization called BritDoc, which is London-based. Um, and they do social issue um, gathering. So filmmakers present their projects to uh, not necessarily film people, but to f um, philanthropy groups and activist groups. So when I did Good Pitch, there was the ACLU and the uh, Defense Lawyers Association, mental health institutions. So all of these people who were thinking, how could we use a film like this in our work? And Good Pitch brings them all together. What that does is it shows your funders um, supporting this film is going to help all those other issues that I support. 
Um, and so, you know, we're really trying to be strategic about helping each other. So I have this great network now in my outreach campaign that includes mental health advocates. Um, there's, you know, gay and lesbian uh, advocates because because I happen to have, you know, and that was just luck. But that was, but you know, but there. One of the defendants had two gay foster. That's parents. right. Um, and so, you know, there, Good Pitch allows you to bring together the social activist mm -hmm. groups and marry it with a film that can help all of them. This is a huge trend, isn't it? Uh, documentaries that are very centered on a specific social ill or problem that somebody sees. There's another one out there about international adoption. There's mm -hmm. one out on fracking. Mm -hmm. They're POV, point of view films. Yes. And they're um, sometimes getting pretty slick, sometimes being commissioned by <laughs> entities that have some other uh, motives at hand as well. Well, that that is something I think, you know, as documentary filmmakers, I mean, I come from a news background, so it was very, um, it's not a news piece. When you make a film, it is your opinion. Um, and we edit in a way that you don't, you would never edit a news piece. We can move things around and um, to condense the story. I have, you know, a three-day trial and it's shown in like seven minutes and that's a long thing. But, um, uh, you know, one of the reasons why you have to be really careful with your funding sources is you cannot give over that editorial control. Um, and so I am very grateful to the Ford Foundation. They saw cuts, but it was the film group that saw cuts primarily. Um, and the justice group saw cuts, but the, the notes were we don't understand this story, not could you add in X, Y, or Z, because I think an audience is very sophisticated these days, and they know in a minute when something is, um, you know, meant to overtake, you know, pressure and lead them into a certain conclusion. So I think... It'll be interesting to watch um, with Kickstarter and some of these crowdsourcing things. I'm, I'm noticing, oh, if you give this much, you get... Uh, credit right. as producer or right. even executive producer. Right, which the broadcast networks then don't like. <laughs> and Well, P it would violate PBS funding and guidelines. It would, that's right. So, um, you know, more and more as people go out there for money, they're offering things that are in the realm of editorial. That's right. And, and, and I think filmmakers really need to be thinking about that. Um, sometimes, you know, you love your story so much and you are so desperate for funding that you can ignore your gut. And I think most people know um, who's going to be a good partner and who's not going to be a good partner. But there are several organizations, like um, I was supported, you know, the, the end credits to my film show that it takes a village, even with a, a documentary that's going to be on HBO and is supported by the Ford Foundation. I had Chicken and Egg, which supports women filmmakers. Um, and they do, they support development, which is very rare that you can get somebody to give you that first $10,000 so you can go film for a while and edit something and really think about your story. Um, IFP Labs, uh, they support you by bringing you to meet with broadcasters. Sundance Institute, um, they gave me a grant and they invited me to their documentary lab, which is like documentary heaven. Um, you spend two weeks there with spectacular editors and they help you craft the film. Tribeca Film Institute, it's all access project. So all of these groups put in a relatively small amount of money, um, but they, they make you part of the community and give you exposure to people who, have, who can mm -hmm. help your film and also help your career. Um, and they make that point very clearly when they begin that we're funding your career as well as this project. So, um, you know, it's so I, I just I want I love that people know about those groups because I think they're very popular in New York City and Los Angeles and Chicago and some of the, the bigger cities. Um, but they're really looking for fresh voices. And I think um, there's a lot of talent all across this country and across the world. Um, and so people should really look into those. Um, and I, I think that they'll be receptive to, the, to voices from other places. And speaking of careers, this is your career now, is isn't it? This is my career. This is no what I do. <laughs> yes. This is your passion and your career. You yes. keep doing it. You have a company called Trilogy. Films. Yes. Is that right? Does yeah. that mean you're only going to make three? Uh, right now. <laughs> three of each. <laughs> oh, three. So we're going to yeah. see, see a sequel to, sequel uh, to yeah. Gideon's Army? Yeah. You know, um, a number of broadcasters have uh, contacted me about maybe making it a serial show, like showing some other public. Uh, so I would love to do that. 
you know, kind of follow other people in other jurisdictions and show what's happening there. Because, you know, there's great stories. I mean, there are people, Americans are interested in the criminal justice system. And this is, this you said earlier, you know, you can't make this stuff up. So. Well, thank you very much. We'll look forward to the trilogies times three. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Don Porter. She's a filmmaker. Thanks for tuning into this Dialogue Web Extra.